It's Carly again. I know I haven't uh, done a video in a little bit. Kind of just wasn't feeling like it, but I'm back. Um, today I want to show you guys how to make a really delicious, really easy Thai dish called larb. Um, I'm going to make larb mu, which means it's larb with pork. Uh, but you could also use ground chicken, which would be called larb guy. And there's not a ton of ingredients, um, and it's very easy to make. I'm just going to do a little overhead shot of the ingredients that you need. Then I'm going to show you how to toast some rice to make some rice powder for it, and then put the dish together. Um, so here are the ingredients. So I've got some rice. Um, you can use really any kind of rice. Usually, traditionally, it's glutinous, sticky rice that you would use. But um, I just had some long grain uh, jasmine rice I'm going to use. Um, I already pre-cut some bunch of scallions, so I'm going to do some scallions, some mint, some cilantro, um, shallot. If you don't have a shallot, you can use red onion, you can use regular onion, whatever you want. Um, this is also going to be for the rice. I've got a cinnamon stick and some red dried chilies. Um, and then I also have um, some ground pork, some fish sauce, and also some lime juice that I pre-squeezed. And that's all the ingredients. Um, so if you want to gather those and then um, I'm gonna show you how to cook the rice for the rice powder next all right we're gonna get to the toasted rice part here hopefully that stays there all right I'm gonna put my heat on like a medium low you want to make sure that you're not gonna burn this rice so um, you can kind of take any amount of rice you're not gonna use that much for the lard but I like to do a batch of it um, so that I have it. So whenever I make larb, it's pretty easy. I don't have to go through this step. So uh, a dry, I have a wok, but you could use a skillet too. Um, so you're just gonna pour the rice in, like so. And then I like to add, you don't even need to do this, but I like to add a cinnamon stick and these red chilies um, because having them in there and toasting them releases a little bit of their oils and it flavors the rice powder a little bit. So basically all you're gonna do and this is something you need to keep your eye on because you don't want to burn the rice. So basically, you're just going to stir this rice around. You can let it sit a little bit, kind of stir it around. Just make sure that it's never in contact with the bottom of the pan for um, too long. Um, and this is probably going to take about 10 minutes of your time. You want it to be like a deep, like a, a good nutty brown sort of that it looks like brown rice um, that you would get, like the same color as brown rice. So yeah, just kind of stir these around. Just make sure you're stirring the, the cinnamon stick and the chili around with it. Um, I'm not gonna make you watch me the whole time I do this, but I'll come back on once this rice is at a point that you want. All right, as you guys can see, I hope you can see, this rice is a lot more brown. I don't know if that helps you see it. The lighting in here is, you know, not super natural, so it's kind of hard to see. But you'll kind of notice that some of the pieces are getting like toasted, um, starting turning brown. I would probably let this go, I like a really deep flavor. Um, I would probably let this go a little bit further, but for purposes of this, um, I'm gonna stop it here. Except I also want to note um, a couple things. This is traditionally in the larb. If, if you don't feel like doing this, by all means, it's not completely necessary, but it does provide a nice toasty, nutty taste and also some texture to the larb. So, um, and again, like I said, you can make like a big batch of it because you're only gonna use like a tablespoon or two of it. Um, and then you can hold it aside and then every other time you make larb because you will make more larb. Um, you can just grab this out of your cabinet. So I'm gonna turn this heat off. Um, I'm gonna pull these toasted peppers out. You can reuse those in something if you wanna make like, I don't know, like a Szechuan oil or something like that, just having toasted spices. So this is what it's gonna look like. I don't know if that helps. Um, and then all you're gonna do is blitz this in um, a grinder. So uh, I personally think that you should own two grinders, one for coffee, one for spices this would include one for spices so um this is the one that i have i don't know if you can see that but it's basically like a coffee grinder 
Um, that's my spice one. I mark it like such. So I'm just going to pour this in there and blitz it up. I'm not going to do that right now because it's going to be too much noise, but I'm going to show you some that I had already made. So I just labeled it my rice powder. And so this is how much I did the other day. And you can see it's like powdery, but it also has still a little bit of texture to it. Um, and it smells, I mean, like toasted rice, but Anyway, so yeah, just blitz it up um, in your blender and then you'll be uh, good to go. So I'll be back in a sec with showing you how to make the main part of this. Dish. Okay, a few more things. Um, again, on that rice, it's not completely necessary, but if you do toast it, one, it's gonna make your house smell amazing. Um, but uh, if you don't have time for it or don't have the ingredients or whatever, um, and as far as toasting with it, you can use cinnamon stick and chili like I did. You can also use star anise. You could use, I suppose, some peppercorn, stuff like that, any sort of dry spices. Um, I stuck to these two because they're typical um, sort of Asian um, spices. So, um, and then I also forgot to tell you about one ingredient too, but I'm gonna just kind of put this down, prep um, the ingredients, which don't take very long at all. Um, and then start cooking. So here we go. All right, so as I said, I already chopped up some scallions, so those are all right. I forgot to tell you guys about some fresh chilies. I usually buy these at the Asian market and they come in like a big sort of, you know, like a pack of them. But what I do is I just pour the, put them into a container and then I put them in my freezer and I can just take out a couple at a time if I want to. They freeze really well. Um, and then, I mean, because they're so cheap, but, and you want to buy them and then you don't want to waste them, but they're also very spicy individually. So, um, so first thing, I guess I'll cut the shallot. So basically you're going to, just like you would an onion too, this is just a smaller version of an onion. You're going to cut both sides, both the root and the tip off like that. Um, and then you just want to slice it super thin. So you're going to pinch grip your knife use your claw over here and then just make really thin slices here now usually so with an onion it's a little bit better um, because I would cut it in half and then you would have like nice little strips like you would caramelize onions but shallots are so small and I can like pull apart these rings I just want to um, so actually when I get to here I can flip this over and then do more cuts this way so like I said you want to do it as thin as possible like something like that and I'm gonna cut this whole thing up even though I'm not I'm not sure if I'm gonna use all of it I kind of like mine pretty oniony and shallowy and they're gonna be fresh so, you know, however you feel about fresh onion taste. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that there. And then the next thing are these peppers. Again, they're pretty spicy. I like to leave the seeds in and I use two of them because I like it pretty spicy. You can use one. Um, if you wanna take the seeds out, I'll just cut off the top. And then what you can do is, I mean, these are pretty small to deal with, but what you would do is just cut it down the middle. And I did a really bad job of that. But basically, if you cut it down the middle, then you'll be able to just kind of cut the um, seeds out. So you would just kind of scrape them out like that, put them aside, just make sure that you're not, you shouldn't be touching your face anyway. But um, like I said, I keep the seeds in, so I just cut these in like little rounds here. And they defrost pretty quickly if you take them out of the freezer. I showed you guys that little freezer thing I have. So um, take this little part here. This is good stuff. And I have that there. And again, use the back of your knife to scrape anything over. Um, and then as far as the cilantro, I like mine really herby. So I put a shit ton of cilantro, mint, and scallions in. If you, for some reason, don't love all that stuff, then by, you know, by all means, adjust this to like what kind of herbs you like, but you want some leafy stuff. If you want parsley, you could put it in there. I just, it's not very traditionally Thai in the way that it's gonna taste like really herby and like a strong herb and parsley doesn't have 
have that much of a taste. So you're just gonna kind of rough chop, just kind of roll this all together into a smaller thing and just sort of rough chop that. And then for mint, what you're gonna do is pick the leaves off. Now with cilantro, you can use the, um, the um, stems because they're tender and they do have flavor in them. But for the mint, you just want to pull off the leaves. And so what I did is I piled them all on top of each other like this. And then mint also bruises pretty easily, so you don't wanna make a ton of cuts. So all you're gonna do is just make some gentle strips, some chiffonade here of the mint. And that's good. Again, it's just all kind of getting thrown in there so it doesn't have to look, you know, perfect. Um, and then again, I've already have my, I already have my scallions cut. And I was just gonna tell you guys too, um, that, I'm gonna flip this up. Um, the best way to, sorry, this is uh, not a great system. <laughs> um, the best way to store your cilantro in the fridge is to put it in some sort of, I have it in a quart container, but if you have a smaller thing of cilantro, you don't have to use such a thing, you can use a pint glass, like whatever. Um, I like to get the cilantro with the roots still attached because it's really, I don't know, it, I feel like it lasts longer. So I just put it in a little bit of water, put the roots in there, and then I cover it with the bag that I got it in, keep it in the fridge. This will keep your cilantro, like this cilantro is probably like a week and a half old. And it still looks pretty great, and I just go in and cut pieces off of it um, let's see what else. I think that's it. I think we're going to start cooking now and it's going to go very quickly. So it is important that you miss out everything in advance. Um, I'm going to open my lime juice so I have it ready to go. Oh, you know what? I forgot another ingredient too. It's, um, you just want a little bit of, traditionally this calls for a palm sugar. I don't have palm sugar, but the closest thing I have to it is brown sugar. So I'm going to add like maybe a teaspoon or so if you want it a little bit sweeter but you know Thai food also has the like you know it's like sweet and sour and tangy and like you know it has like a bite so that's why we're using the lime juice that's why we're using the fish sauce that's why we're using the brown sugar um, so yeah let me move the camera or the, the camera the phone around and um, we'll get to cooking and it's gonna get like I said it's gonna go really quickly and just so you know um, this is usually served in lettuce wraps. Um, I just never really have lettuce around to do that. So I usually eat it plain just by itself or I'll put it on some, like I'll cook some rice and put it on top of that. Um, so that's how I would serve it. Or I suppose you could put it on some like spinach or some salad if you didn't wanna, you know, wrap it in a lettuce leaf or something like that. Um, all right, get to cooking. All right, this is the best part, the quickest part. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna use the wok that I made the rice in. I'm gonna heat it up a tiny little bit, and I'm gonna use some um, canola oil. You could use some sesame oil um, as well. It's gonna impart a little bit of a flavor, but I like to have sort of a flavorless oil to use. Um, so I'm gonna let this get a little bit hot. Put the oil in. You can be pretty generous with it. And then once that gets hot, I'm gonna have my pork at the ready. I actually split my pork. I had a pound of it and I'm only gonna cook a half a pound because that's about a serving or a little bit more. Sometimes I have leftovers, so um, I'm gonna do that. So basically I'm just gonna throw the pork or you're gonna throw the ground chicken in here. And I just kind of like pat it down. I like it to get, I like it to get brown on one side because as you know, like ground meat, otherwise it can just look kind of like meh, whatever. Um, you don't necessarily need a ton of salt because the fish sauce is gonna impart that, but I just use like a tiny little bit of salt there. Um, and so basically the order of events is that you're gonna cook this and then you're gonna add um, the lime juice and the fish sauce and the brown sugar. Um, and then you're actually gonna pull it off the heat and add everything else. So um, I'll be back when the meat is a little bit more brown. All right, now that this is, the meat's about cooked, I'm gonna start adding the, I'm gonna add the green chilies, fresh green chilies that I chopped up. I'm gonna put those in there. I'm also gonna put about a teaspoon of the brown sugar in here. 
a tablespoon of lime juice. And I kind of freehand my fish sauce. I kind of just do like a little, I know how much I usually use, so I just kind of do, that might be a teaspoon, maybe not. So I just make sure that that's well combined. And then once it's combined and I let it cook for a second, I just test the flavor levels. It should be nice and you can taste the lime so it tastes like citrusy and a little tangy and sour. But then the fish sauce is gonna pack that like salt umami punch. Um, and then the sugar is gonna make it sweet. So I like pretty bold flavors. So for me, I like to put a lot of everything in here. Um, again, you can adjust this to your taste. I was gonna say too, as a side note, um, if you're a vegetarian, you can probably make this with tofu. And then there also are vegetarian fish sauce recipes online, which I think you use um, maybe miso and some like dried mushroom or some other mushroom to make it. I forget, I have looked it up, but there are a lot of resources online that you can um, make uh, fish sauce and don't skimp on using that like it's an important I think that people think they don't like fish sauce It doesn't taste fishy. It just adds like a depth of flavor Okay, so this is pretty much done. I'm just gonna steal a piece out of here Make sure it Tastes like I want it to Actually could use a splash more lime maybe even a drip of fish sauce. And so what I do right before I turn it off is when I add my shallots. Cause I like to be able to have it like soak up a, a little bit of the juices in here and kind of break it up into like the more slivery, circle -y sort of thing. Have the juices in there. that around and combine it and then I turn it off and that's when I add all my herbs so I'll just do like have some scallions I like a lot of scallions I'll throw in the cilantro I'll throw in the mint and then I'll also throw in like a pinch of the rice powder now a pinch is three fingers and a thumb so take a pretty big pinch like this I like it a little bit crunchy and some texture, so I mix that in there. And then just mix it all up and everything will soak up the liquid that's in there. That's it. That is it, that's how you make larb. Um, I actually usually top mine with some crushed peanuts because I think it's really nice, but you can do, again, whatever you want. Um, yeah. I'm gonna talk to you in just a second when I have the uh, view off of this pan. All right, so that's larb. Um, I just topped mine with some, I just chopped up some peanuts and put it on there. I'll show you the final dish before it once I'm done talking. But um, yeah, it's super healthy, super fresh tasting. Um, I mean, it's up to you what kind of herbs you put in there. Uh, again, you can use ground meat or tofu, maybe even tempeh would be really good. Um, maybe even, um, I mean, I haven't done this, but maybe you can make it um, out of some shiitakes or some mushrooms too, whatever you want. I feel like you can riff on anything. The important thing here are the flavors you use, the herbs and the lime um, and the brown sugar and the fish sauce or the vegetarian fish sauce. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, once you make this for yourself, you're gonna wanna make it all the time. I can barely contain myself I'm looking at it. It looks delicious. Um, yeah, I'm just going to show you my finished product here, and hopefully you go forth and make some larb. There you go. Just put some peanuts on there. I'm going to dig in.